I also would like to make a quick observation about this use of uh, opening and closing braces, like curly braces like this. So right here, what I have um, is that um, uh, we use this uh, set of braces in different uh, situations. But one use like this, when we initialize our data structure with uh, some values to begin with, just always think about this initialization is that it's almost like uh, you know something that describes what needs to go into memory so basically the 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 idea that we create an object which i like to display as a like a box a 3d box so essentially this represents this box that we're trying to construct like this right so this is a 3d box and this 3d box will contain this integer right right here it will contain another integer right here it will contain the third integer like this, and we're populating this structure. And this will be our string. So our string will be constructed from, uh, from this uh, literal string uh, over here. So this is just an idea of the curly braces. It just essentially uh, tells the compiler that we'd like to have this object populated specifically with these data pieces. And uh, uh, likewise, when we use uh, this the set of curly braces with functions uh, what uh, will result from here is that function also has uh, memory and every line of code every statement is going to be translated into some sort of uh, into some set of cpu instructions like this and the curly braces kind of show us where the beginning and ending of this uh, set of instructions is and again this has something to do with computer memory. Of course, this the the compiled statements are not data. They're actually executable statements directly understood by our CPU once the program is compiled. But once again, program has to be placed in memory before it can execute. So once again, the curly braces, the opening and closing braces, do something with memory. And uh, here, uh, in the definition of the structure, again we use we observe. Uh, we observe the use of the opening and closing brace. They're always used together. Uh, they're always paired together, opening and closing one. And uh, we mentioned that structure itself does not create any objects. It only tells the compiler that it's, it, it should be possible to create objects of this type. And the opening and closing brace here provides the scope for our structure, which basically uh, defines a memory layout in the first place when we begin to create and initialize the uh, data structures of this type with specific data right so this these are the three three ways we use uh, these braces but they're all related it is always uh, something to do with actual computer memory uh, which will be used by either functions or the data like this local rectangle object so uh, structures were introduced in C a long time ago. Uh, C++ inherited uh, the syntax of C, but it also allowed to add functions uh, to uh, user-defined types. So let's talk about the idea behind this. It just happens to be that if we want to have functions such as set dimensions for definition of our rectangle or compute the area of our rectangle, of course, these functions could be defined outside of the structure, just like uh, free functions that don't uh, exist anywhere but in, in, uh, in the open space. And then, of course, the input parameter, one of the input parameters should be the, the, the copy of the structure or pointer to a structure, right? So there could be another parameter that provides the structure and then we can uh, we can access it and uh, and write the implementation of this function but functions such as set dimensions or compute the area of this rectangle are always going to be used with the structure so the idea is then why should we define these functions somewhere else if we could just take them like this Right? And this is the C++. Uh, this is not available in C. And basically place the, uh, these functions directly inside the structure. So what does that mean? 
if, if we do it like this, so for instance, we want to be able to change the dimensions, which means update width and height. So now what we can do, right? So we can uh, now write code such as uh, rectangle, okay, something like this, rectangle uh, set dimensions, okay? And for instance, we can uh, set new dimensions, uh, which is a member function call, and provide new dimensions such as uh, 200 to 100. So basically scaling our rectangle uh, ten, 10 times larger in terms of its width and height, right? So uh, member functions like we have over here, by the way, so the, these are called member functions, okay? But I normally don't write it like this. Uh, typically, I just write a comment like operations. We say that uh, uh, this um, uh, data structure, this definition of the new user-defined data type will provide a set of operations which are useful to have alongside with the data that our structure encapsulates. So I typically call them operations, but uh, from the C++ uh, compiler standpoint, technically they're called C++ member functions. In Java, they're called Java methods, so Java class a method is the same as C++ member functions. It's just basically the same name for, I mean, two different names for the same thing. Okay, so right here, if I want to set the dimensions, what I need to do, because it's a member function, I have to have created an instance of this object, of this rectangle, which I have. I called it rectangle, and now I can say rectangle, let's set the dimensions. Okay, and uh, I will update the dimensions, and I set width and height to the new values. Now, if I want to display the area, now, unfortunately, I already added area right here as a, as a, as a data member variable, so I'll actually remove it. It's kind of silly, right? It was just here for demonstration. So here, I'll just get rid of this uh, area computation uh, in my initialization. So in my initialization, I will only use... Uh, uh, these three parameters corresponding to these three data member variables. Uh, and uh, now we have an area which uh, computes width, uh, width multiplied by height, okay, of our rectangle. So let's uh, uh, use this uh, statement right here to demonstrate how we can do that. Rectangle area, Right, a rectangle area would be just simply a call area function, which by the by the way does not require any parameters. Uh, the only parameters that you really need is a rectangle that you already have. So once we have this rectangle, uh, we use its name to access both uh, the member variables and functions such as set dimensions or area. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at uh, at the resulting code uh, uh, when we uh, when we run this. So what happens at runtime if we run this program? Okay, so this is the this is the actual result. Uh, so before we print width and height, we ch we change the dimensions, set dimensions, and then uh, we compute the area uh, right here. The area. Uh, is a function which belongs to the uh, user-defined data type. And uh, so, of course, when we compute the area, it just uh, uses the, the actual physical values stored by this object in memory and uh, returns back the result of uh, computation. So you can see that everything is like 200 by 100 uh, is computed here uh, quite right.